budget? <laughs> really? <laughs> so, <laughs> good. Just ask. Can we? Come on, hurry. All right. Can we get out all kinds of goodies for you tonight? I'm Eric from Love Wall, by the way, I think. Yeah. Most of you. What I'm handing out to you now. Um, this is your full budget as it stands right now on the Gateway system, which Gateway is the portal online where public access to your budgets and documents and so forth. If you flip through it, it's got every state required form by the DLGF. When I use DLGF, I'm referring to Department of Local Government Finance. That's the state branch that reviews your budget, approves your levy budget, so on and so forth. What you all have already seen, I know in your workshops, if you go in, a few pages right there where it starts in the form ones. Mm -hmm. This is just, the, it looks a little bit different than what you saw in your workshops, but it's the same type of format. This is the state's format. So if you look on the left hand column, it tells you which fund you're in, and then here gives a description of the different accounts, so on and so forth. So tonight's the, the public hearing. If there's any public questions or obviously questions from the council, um, I'll be happy to answer those. But between now and October 5th, which is your adoption, you can make changes still to those but you can't make changes that increase your budget in total for any of the funds. So for instance, if your general fund budget is in total, I think it's about 470,000, 450,000. If you want to move some line items around, you can, but you can't increase that amount in total, okay? Don't think that that's the end of the world. If you find something, say, oh, we really wanted this in there and it didn't get put in, you can always do an additional appropriation next year to be able to still pay for whatever that might want to be, okay? The other piece I have, which is what I'm actually gonna go through with you tonight, this will be familiar to those of you that have been on the council before. This is kind of the summary that we do. Um, Lisa really worked, I know, with you guys in your workshops with the department heads, kind of putting all the budget forms together, which are in the big packet, uh, filling it in on Gateway. Um, but as we've talked about in the past, the Gateway forms that the state gives you aren't necessarily real conducive to what typically when I work with councils around the state, the question is, okay, if we adopt this budget that we've kind of had all these work sessions on, what does it mean to our bottom line? That's typically people are interested in kind of cash flow, cash impact. So what I have here is kind of what we call a cash flow summary. Um, it's a lot shorter, obviously, than the other document, but I'm going to take a few minutes if you're all right with that to go through this. It won't take probably more than 10 minutes. Yeah. Um, if you flip to page two, I'll kind of give you the layout of the lane here. Um, if you look at the top of this page, you're going to see your different funds. It actually goes over page two and three, your different funds. So general on the far left, that's obviously your largest operational fund where you spend most of your day-to-day -day costs and so on and so forth. On the left, you'll notice about the top half of the page are revenues. And the middle of the page has your disbursements where you'll see four categories, personal services, supplies, other services, charges, capital outlays, everybody see where I'm at there? Mm -hmm. Those are the main budget categories uh, by the state. So if you went through those form ones, and there's actually a summary form there called a 4A that you would find in that bigger uh, section. If you added up all your form ones by their type, so salaries and wages are under personnel, so on and so forth, these numbers would tie to what's in the budget book. So that's what I'm talking about. This is really a, a, a higher level summary of if you adopt your form ones and worked on what the impact is. Now what we're looking at on page two is 2016. So you may be saying, well, I thought we were having a public hearing on 2017 tonight. Why are we talking about 2016? It's a little convoluted, but the way the state has to do your budget is they have to look at an 18-month period because they start at June 30th, basically your cash balances, because we can't wait until the end of the year to adopt next year's budget. It has to be in place already. So they actually are looking at an 18-month period, so they really estimate where you're going to end in 2016 to start 2017, okay? So we do the same type of thing. We do an estimate of where we think you're going to end up cash-wise in each fund for 2016. Now, the one caveat there is the state, in a log in this, analysis assumes you spend every single dollar that you budgeted for 2016 because you've already appropriated everybody's feeling like appropriation that's the authority to spend so since you've already appropriated this money they have to make the assumption you're going to spend every single dollar now, as I've talked every year you guys never spend every single dollar especially in your general fund so what I show for your ending cash balances there you see the bold line estimated ending cash and cash equivalents mm -hmm. that's prob more than likely especially in your general fund understated because that assumes you spend every single dollar in 16 that you budgeted. So 
simple math then, to the extent that you underspend your budget in 16, it just adds to your bottom line. Okay? The only other item that I'm going to turn to 17 and really focus on that that I want to point you to is, this gives you a little flavor for what I talked about, how you underspend your budgets usually. Look on page 2, right above that bold line where it says beginning cash and investments, and for the general fund, 963000 Does everybody see where I'm at with that line, that number? And the general fund column right above the bold, it says beginning cash and cash. Which period. page you on? Page 2. Okay. okay. Everybody see yeah. that number, 963 yeah. in the general fund? So this is what you, this was your actual starting cash balance for 2016. So this is your year in 2015. Well, this time last year we met with the council and went through the same type of exercise. You know, we were estimating what you're going to end 15 at. Mm -hmm. So when I go back and compare those estimates versus where you actually ended up, for instance, in the um, general fund, you beat the estimates by about $75,000. So you're $75,000 higher at the end of six, six of the end of 15 than what we estimated this time last year. That tells you how much you're, a little bit of it was some additional revenues that you got, but the majority of it was underspending your budget. Um, another big one is local roads and streets, uh, you're about $30,000 different. Um, MVH, or sorry, park, you're about $20,000 better. So that kind of gives you a flavor for how you underspend your budgets traditionally. Does that make sense? So we'd expect a similar trend probably at the end of 16. If you'll flip with me though to page, um, Well, it's labeled six. Sorry, the page numbers got messed up here. Um, the 2017, just flip two pages. It'll say 2017 at the top. If you have a blank page, sorry that the looks like the printer didn't copy correctly. Um, everybody on that where it says 2017, you have your general fund in the top left. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, this is the budget as you guys went through your workshop. Sorry, George. It looks like you got a I got two messed blanks. up. <laughs> I don't know what happened to your copy. <laughs> you wouldn't understand. Yeah, try that one. I don't know what happened there. Blank pages. I meant that one specifically for you, I guess. <laughs> exactly. Everybody knows the site out of one. There, that one looks better. It looks like you have everything on there. Um, so if you focus on the general fund column, we're going to walk through this a little bit uh, line by line. Let's start at the very top. Property tax, $350,000. Everybody see where I'm at? On that, okay. I'm just doing some other things. Like okay, that. Um, three hundred fifty thousand. That's what the state we anticipate will tell you you're getting property tax wise. We have this thing called circuit breaker that I think everybody's aware of now. If you're not, let me know and I can explain it in a little more detail. But you actually never realize your full amount of property tax because people are capped at what they pay every year. So in your general fund, you actually will not realize sixty thousand dollars of that. So the net property tax, two hundred ninety thousand, is what we actually think you'll receive in your general fund. Does that make sense to everybody? So that's the number you'll get, and basically two equal payments: one in June, one in December. The next several lines are miscellaneous type revenues, other state distributions. You'll see set things in there like your trash fee collections. You'll see like cigarette and alcohol tax distributions from the state, uh, some cable franchise fees you have. If you went over into your motor vehicle highway fund, you'd see things like the state distribution for MBH. Um, those are basically non-property tax distributions that you get, okay? But what you're looking at is, if you go to the middle of the page, total receipts. So again, in your general fund, we anticipate you'll get about $830,000, okay? Those are our estimated for the year. Now we compare that to your budgeted disbursements, which came off those Form 1s that you worked through, and you'd see total disbursements of about $1,040,000. Everybody see that number? So there in the highlight is comparing your estimated revenues by your estimated expenditures, we'd actually anticipate if you spent every single dollar that's budgeted, you'd have a decrease in cash of a little over $200,000 in your general fund. Okay? Now the first question a lot of times is, well, will the state approve this budget because that doesn't sound like we're going the right direction. Yes, they will because you have cash balances that you build up over time. The state will approve a budget as long as you have a dollar left in the bank at the end of the year. Okay? They don't care if it's a balanced budget. Our revenues at least equal our expenditures. They just care you can't go negative. Okay, so you're a ways, you have pretty healthy cash in your general fund. You're ways to go negative. So if you really wanted to spend 200000 more than you bring in next year, they would allow that. Okay? If you follow the yellow line across, though, fund by fund, you'll see where you see a negative number there with brackets. That's where we anticipate your costs are going to outweigh your revenues. Now, you'll see that in general, MBH, slightly smaller in your EMS, some in your park. If you flip the page, you'll see a little bit in your cemetery. 
a CCI, that's Q capital, that's a Q capital improvement. You get cigarette taxes in there, basically, um, and then CCD. Now, the majority of these are driven somewhat by, especially in your MBH and your CCI and CCD. We put some placeholders there for capital. If you look at the capital line, you'll see some fairly decently large numbers for those funds. Um, those are just really placeholders for. I think there's some. Some ideas of what maybe needs to be spent, will be spent. There may be some grant money that you need a, a match for if that comes through. So we want to appropriate that so you have the ability to match that if it comes through. Does that make sense? Yeah. The other piece to this is if you spend um, similar to how you have in the past, for instance, in your general fund where I see the $200,000 native cash flow, it's obviously not going to be to that extent because you'll underspend your budget. You, you typically in your general fund spend about 90% of your budget. So really take 10% off your appropriations. Right there is about a little over $100,000 if you just kind of stay on that track. Does that make sense? Yeah. If you flip the page to the last page, it's labeled at the top, comparison of actual spending to budget by fund. This will just reiterate that fact a little bit for you. I did 2014 at the top and 2015. If you look at 2014, you understand your budget by about 52000 in the general fund, but overall, for all your funds together, you actually underspent your budget by over $200,000 in 14. In 2015, you underspent your total budget by about $140,000. Okay. The last thing that I point you to is in 2015, you see the actual column for the general fund, $809,000. Everybody see where I got that number? <coughs> so you actually spent your general fund $809,000 in 2015. If you look at 2014, it was even less than that, about $725,000. Let's just assume that you spend the eight hundred thousand plus maybe even a ten percent allowance. That still only puts you about nine hundred thousand dollars in spending. Flip back to the page we just looked at for the twenty seventeen general fund budget. See where we have our negative cash flow of two hundred thousand dollars, two hundred and thirteen thousand dollars a highlight. If you spent similar to fifteen or even with some extra spending from fifteen, you would basically almost completely eliminate that negative cash flow. Does that make sense? So it's the same thing I've told you in the past of, I think your budgets are high. There's, a, I understand some reasoning for that. You don't necessarily know what's going to happen. You want to have some placeholders there. But I really think realistically, you'll be a lot closer to a balanced budget than we show here. There's two schools of thought there. Some cities and towns want to have their budget as accurate and pinpoint as possible so they know, hey, when I look on paper, this is all we're approving for our department heads to spend, and we're trying to balance our budget as close as possible. There's other towns that say, you know, we don't really know what's coming down the road. We may have these <coughs> projects we want, to, we want to do. Let's budget those in. But then you kind of always have to remember through 2017, hey, we're not going to spend that money unless the grant comes through or we tear down the building that we're talking about, so on and so forth. Does that make sense? The last thing I'll leave you with is, Again, you can handle these negative cash flows for a year or two. Let's say you did spend every single but every single dollar that you're budgeting in 17, everything came to fruition. But you can't do that obviously sustainable into the future. So you've been increasing your cash balances because you underspend your budget every year. But if that trend does continue and you start spending all of this, you probably only want to do it a year or two, and then you got to reverse that trend again and build your cash back up. Does that make sense? How many years on our throw, bro? I ask you that every year. What's that? How many? <laughs> how many? Well, you, you'd have you'd have at least three or four, even if you spent this time in your general fund, which is not likely. But um, yeah, you, you have pretty healthy cash balances. That's and that's a good point, George. If you look at that page I was on, you see that line a few down. This is the operating balance percentage. Um, and I think we usually talk about this too. If you look at your general fund, where it says fifty-six percent. I can tell you, I work with, Umball works with over 100 communities every year on their budget. I work with about 20 specifically. You guys would be pretty enviable from a lot of communities I work with by having 56%. What that means is, at the end of the year, you would have over half of the year's expenditures sitting in the bank in cash. So you can go through over half a year without getting another dollar. I work with a lot of communities in their general fund, they're 10% in there. The reason it's important to have healthy cash shares, remember, your biggest revenue source is that tax draw that only comes from twice a year. So there's some communities that actually go in the red during the year waiting on their June or December distribution to come. I would strongly encourage you, keep, you've got that at 50% or above, try to keep that at 50% or above uh, in, in the future. We really don't have a whole lot of capital out. 
projects on this though this year? Um, not in your general. You do have in MVH, there's a pretty healthy amount there. And then if you flip over to this is second page, CCI, CCD, and rainy day, there's about a hundred and I don't know what that is, about 120,000 or so left in there. And then also keep in mind, you got that the far right fund there, the lowest special distribution. That's a new one. That's that money that you got from the state. It was really your money. They just gave it back to you finally. Um, that you have to use on paving type projects. Yeah. So that's another fifty thousand dollars sitting there that you kind of have available. So overall, if you if you look though, George, to the very far right um, on that second page, mm -hmm. the total capital outlays for all the funds is about four hundred thirty thousand dollars. If you look at the second from the last page, oh, so. yeah, come all the way right here. So if you add all the funds up. You have about four hundred thirty thousand dollars budget for capital. Now, a lot of that, I think, is paving, or if we get this grant type thing related, not necessarily specific to anything. So we can pave every street in town. <laughs> a lot of them. Yeah, you can. We did that so that you guys would have it if we applied for the NDOT grant. They're matching the funds yeah. right now, so. Yeah, a lot of communities I'm working with this year are seeing on paper the negative kind of cash flow like you are, especially some of the capital type funds, because they're doing the same thing. They're saying, hey, we're going to go for this grant next year to spend up because we can get basically two bucks for every one we spend. And that's kind of smart. When we work as a financial advisor, that's smart to do where you build up cash. Hey, if we get this windfall in one year, yeah, I don't really mind you dipping into your cash reserves to get two for one on that. Then you got to remember in a future year, let's try to rebuild those. Right? That does. <laughs> now, is there any more questions? Is that all you need for me? Sneak out if that's okay. Thank you so much. You know, do, do you need me to come on the adoption meeting the fifth? I usually I don't, but I'm just, <coughs> you just have to kind of sign the ordinance or maybe you need to make changes up to it. Like I said. I don't think I need to be here to do you have any changes, let well, Lisa know, and we can kind of work through it and update these cash flows if you want us to. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Is there any questions from the audience about the budget? No. Move that we close the meeting. We got a motion. Second. Yeah, second. All in favor say aye. 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 <laughs>
We got a motion and a second to accept the minutes from September 7th, 2016. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Citizens input. Yes. Yes, I have a question about my... What's your name now? Yeah. <laughs> I'm new to town. <laughs> no, we, I guess I should have come and talked to her. But I have a question about uh, the town bill. My last town bill. Um, the only reason I'm questioning is because we were on vacation for 10 days, and it's the same as it was the month before when I was here all month. The thing that we're telling everybody right now is the dates on the last uh, town bill were the middle of July until the middle of August. Right. It was, with the humidity, we had so many days that were almost 100 degrees. I wasn't here from the 6th of September, August, and, and I was gone for 10 days. And I understand that, but did you have your air running? I did not, I had it shut off. You had your air shut I off? I had my air shut off. Okay, well, it, then it worked super hard on the rest of the days. We have not taken a rate increase on our electric rates since 2013, 2011, is that right? 2011. I thought the rate on the electric varied with this with the power supplier. Track. Your, power, with your track. power tracker, but not. We have not personally raised any rates, so it has to be the usage. So, so well, it's it's like I mean, 30, 30 what, off, yeah, one month to the other. Right, but what is the... But it was more. It was more the, the month I was it. gone. Right, but what's the usage? The, what your, your home pulled on there? Do you see the usage? Right here. Right. Okay. Okay, this is the month that I was gone. I was right. gone. Right. Here's the month I was yeah. home. Okay, so you used more electric on the month that you were gone. For 10 days, right. Than you did when you were near. Right. So because, that doesn't make any sense. Because it was so hot. Oh, I, I, disagree. Yeah. I disagree with that. Have her air on. I disagree for those with three that. days, she did not have her air on. I didn't. So, so the other 20 days or so it yeah, used the other right. It would have been and higher than that had you been home. Right. It would have been even <coughs> higher had you been home. Okay, and the month before, it just, it just I, did, I don't pay attention normally. I just kind of look. Right. Okay, I had two months in a row that, the, that they read the same. Like 181. Okay, the usage was um, 425 one month mm -hmm. and uh, 529, so there was 100. Yeah. Whatever those are, difference. Right. And, but the, sa the amount was the same. You know, the total amount. Well, then you used less water or more water or something. You know, the water's about the same yeah. both, all the months. It just didn't make any sense, and I know everybody was grumbling. Oh, everybody. Mine everybody. was over 400, so. <laughs> yeah. oh. How often do you check those? Yeah. 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 Guns. Yeah. The meters, yes. they either work or they don't. They're 100% solid state. There's no testing of them anymore because there's, there's no moving parts. Um, either it reads or it does not. And I, you'd have to ask Jamie. They're within plus or minus a percent and a half either way. Yeah, you guys have actually been going out physically doing weekly here. Yeah, we started reading a book by by walking it, and we're just checking for services that are bad, <coughs> seals that have been cut, possibly metered, tampering, <coughs> things like that. But if the display, even if the display is not lit, it will still read, or we'll get a notification when we do read that if there is a no read then we will go back and check the meter and then we'll change it out if it's bad. But they either work or they don't. We had a lot of 90 degrees days during the, that period. And even though it's only 90 degrees, we also have high humidity, which is what is making your air pull more. You know what I mean? That's the way it was explained to me. And that's, I mean, like I said, we have not changed. We do our rates, even the power tracker, every quarter. So it hasn't changed since um, beginning of July, right? I believe so. 
So, and that's just a minimal, like point something of a. Yeah, it was, we, yeah, my it was bill like was point, considerably higher too. Yeah, so mine was way crazy. high. Yeah, but it just seems strange because we were gone for 10 days. Yeah. And it shut off. Right. Yeah, I, you know, the only thing I can tell you is we can check your meter if you want. I mean, you can have them reread it and see. That's what we, we can also come in and do a bill history more, yeah. than, more than just a couple months and compare yeah. it to this time last year or the yeah. trends of, that we had yeah. in the past. But we have gotten a lot of complaints over that last bill because it was very hot this summer. I'm done. <laughs> we kind of answer your question? Yes. Okay. Well, I don't know if you answered that, but yeah. Okay. Well, I mean, I just want to make sure that you're not still hanging there. No, I, it just seems strange to me. And I didn't pay attention to it because mine comes out automatic. I mean, I look at it. <coughs> But then I got to thinking afterwards, everybody was grumbling. And I looked back at mine and I said, well, yeah, we were gone for 10 days. So I thought I'd ask. Come on into the office. We'll run the off bill history and stuff if you want. Pardon? You know, come into the office and we'll sure. run you off sure. of bill history and stuff. If you, you know what's funny about that? Every time I go on vacation, my bill is higher. Just plain that. It is. I went to Hawaii for 14 days and go back. My heat bill is higher. And it's, uh, you know, every time I go away, my I come back. It's higher than what it was if I stayed here. I don't know why. Well, it doesn't make sense. There's somebody living there. With the the closer the, the back, you know, it has to. Yeah, it's like you said, it's, it's yeah. back. The neighbors are yeah. 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 Right. 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 Any other citizens input? Moving on, old business, attorney report. The only thing I have to tell you about is our RMC issue. If you remember at the last meeting we had um, authorized, we basically issued a formal proposal or resolution to our service territory uh, matter. And I found out this week that uh, the RMC had their meeting on the 12th of September and they did agree to accept that proposal. So the next step in this process is this attorney that I'm working with in Indianapolis, her name is Erin Borisov. Um, she intends to put together, it's called a joint petition to the IURC, which will in essence formalize those boundaries um, that we've agreed to, to recognize. Um, and I'm not familiar with this, so I, don't, I can't tell you, counsel, if this is a 60-day process or a six-month process, but she was going to put something together and, and kind of have a a basic framework for that uh, for us to take a look at. She says by the end of next week, um, I told her I thought that was fine, but it sounds like things are moving forward in a positive direction there, so we can get that put to bed. That's all I had to report. Thank you, Derek. I move to accept the attorney's report. Second. We have a motion and a second to accept the attorney report. Say aye. 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 Old library. Everybody's got this. Uh, <coughs> estimate proposal. I wish I think I would have been here to explain it a little more. To us. Let's see. We, we just really got it. We understand the all this B word, A word. So should be. Uh, since we just got this tonight, with no explanation, I will get back with him and get a better explanation. At least it gives you some money figures to look at. Okay, there were six other pictures with this, mm -hmm. but they were the pictures of the building right. that we had. Right. You know, so I just printed this off. It was like hidden as one of the last ones in the mm -hmm. list. So when I first started looking through it, I thought it was just the blueprints again. So. I mean, it, it does tell you what they're going to do, like the trusses and the exactly. rib metal gross and stuff like that in the, like the scope of the A work. And then he tells you later on to add B onto A if you, you know what I mean? I can even look through it and maybe have a workshop about it. Okay. Right. It's not going. <coughs> 
Next up, workshop for Hoosier Start Program. Everybody has a resolution in front of you. Resolution 2016-8. I'll make a motion that we accept this resolution. Second. Got a motion and a second to accept this resolution. Any discussion? That heard? I think we're going to have to get uh, all the employees in there and let this guy talk to them once we yeah. see what they want to do. Then we'll sign the sheet. Where we can vote on what we want done. Any more discussion? Mm -hmm. None heard. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Board openings. Marshall County Tourism. Planning Commission, BZA. If you're interested, submit an application, submit a your paperwork to Lisa. Um, other old business, any other old business? New business. Ordinance 2016-12. It's an ordinance abolishing the Maple Grove Cemetery, Cemetery Board. I'm going to read it through it all. Motion we adopt or, or suspend the rules and adopt ordinance 2016 11 on all three readings to abolish the cemetery board. 12. I second. 12. 12. 2016 12. Excuse me. <clears throat> we got a motion and a second to suspend a rule and pass ordinance 2016 12 on all three readings. Any further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 <clears throat> Halloween time and date. <clears throat> Talk about this after that. We got to decide on Halloween yeah. treating. We would like to do it the 31st, which is a Monday from 9 to 7, which is what we normally do, but it's up to you guys when you want to do it. <coughs> Down, what about businesses? So. Oh, I thought that was the same time. So do it all Monday night then? Do everything Monday night? How do you know? They just had a half hour. Yeah, they just between oh, oh. four and five last year. Yeah, yeah it was like an hour, wasn't it? Mm -hmm. I think it was four and five. Businesses did it. <clears throat> that way, they could go home at five. Mm -hmm. So how late was the other seven? Was it five, five to seven. Five to seven.
Well, I could see. It's only seven. Yeah, and, and, and it's I mean, the kids kind of, they're used to that. It's, it's just Halloween. Monday, uh, 7 o'clock, they'll all be back home. And it's, yeah. a, it's a tradition more than anything. Yeah. 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 Halloween from four to five for businesses and five to seven for residential on Monday, October 31st. Second that. A motion and a second <coughs> to set Halloween for four to five for businesses and five to seven for the rest of the town on October 31st on Monday. Say aye. 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 Motion carries. <coughs> right now. Scarecrow contest. The town of Argus is hosting a scarecrow decorating contest. Anyone is able to decorate a scarecrow? It says anyone is able to decorate a scarecrow. Scarecrows will be displayed on the light poles in town. Light poles will be assigned first come, first serve. Applications to decorate a scarecrow can be completed at the town building during normal business hours by Monday, October 10th. Scarecrows need to be completed by Saturday, October 15th. Voting begins Monday, October 17th and ends on Halloween, Monday, October 31st at 5 p.m. All decorations need to be removed by Wednesday, November 2nd. Voting for scarecrows will take place at local businesses. Voting containers will be supplied by the town. There will be prizes for first, second, and third place. Any questions, contact the town of Argus. No. <laughs> what? Foundation bids. I think we need to just get a, a workshop on that first. Okay. Well, um, the cemetery cleanup, I apologize, but um, Susan's working on the fall newsletter. She'd like to include it. What, you, what day was it last year? Usually the middle of November, I believe, yeah. isn't it? So it's yeah. after yeah, Veterans Day. I think so. Yeah. Whatever she day it was last year. She had to have a date. <coughs> Whatever day it was last year, okay. sound good to you guys? Well, what day it was? In November? <laughs> I don't know. I mean, it didn't hurt anything last year to have it on that day. No, it not. But we're going to have a, we, we, we probably should have a workshop so we can figure that out. So we can have a workshop. When is she doing this? So do we do it on the weekend normally? <laughs> okay, was it done on the weekend? We try to do it whatever okay, so closest to that Saturday. Yeah. The, day, the Saturday after is the 12th. You're having a fish fry then, right? Yes. So the fire department's having a fish fry on that. So it would have to be like the 19th or the yep. on, on down. Uh, next one would be after Thanksgiving. So the 19th. only thing that is is to notify the the people that are in town that go out and clean up their own grave sites. Nobody actually, I mean, the the people that go out and take care sure. of their own grave sites, they go out and they clean up their own. That's all. It's just posted in the letter every year. Okay. That's all it means. I mean, there isn't like a volunteer group that's planning to go out there or anything like that. <coughs> so just Unless you want to plan something. 12th. <laughs> the 12th is day you guys well, decide. Yeah, I just, you know, having, I just told them I to get a date. It, that's just a date that they have to have it done. Yeah. It doesn't mean we're going to write. Right. Okay. okay. Yeah. And if they don't have it done by that date, then then we go figure out how to take care of it. That's the day we give them okay. take care of it. Uh, After that, we take care of it. Well, let's go to the 12th then. Make a motion that we'll have the cemetery cleanup uh, set date for November the 12th. Second that. 
motion is second to have the cemetery cleanup date set on November 12th. Any further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. We're going to have a workshop about the foundations, correct? Right. All right. Next item, non-town employee pay. I don't know what that means. Is it W two versus yes? Yeah. Okay, well that we have. Um, I sent out a long email describing how we needed to change the way that we pay volunteers in the town because of the unemployment situation. So, um, did it? All of you guys read it and you got it. So that is exactly what that is. I need a vote whether or not. I make a motion that we pay our non-town employees with 1099 instead of W-2. Yeah, I'll second that. Okay. Got a motion and a second to play all the non-town employees with 1099. Can we ask? Uh, what, can we ask any questions to the department heads? Or did we vote? Go ahead. No. Our department liaison, we just, we're on. Okay, just got There's no problem. No. Okay. All right. Go ahead. Mm -hmm. I just wanted to make sure. We got a motion and a second to. Uh, Pay all non-town employees with a 1099. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Any other new business? that really just blinked the lights but nobody was out of power the squirrel got into the restaurant over here by the rhubarb rain committed suicide um, street department has been working on chipping brush and picking up yard debris and also the walking trail extension out to mcdonald's for the most part our part of it is done we've got the culverts installed the only thing that i have not done yet is tear out where carl eby's drive is at because I don't want him driving in a gully to get into his garage. Um, and I'm working with EMB. They've had a pushback on paving because of weather. Um, we also had a minor glitch with one landowner. Um, and we had to shrink the walking trail, but it's, it's really not that noticeable. Um, and we've worked with his son. His son came out and I think we're okay. We are within the easement of the permit that I have, so there's really not a lot they can do about it anyway. Um, They're supposed to be here in the middle of this week and start putting down six inches of stone and then paving it. Well, here we are in the middle of the week and they haven't shown up yet. So um, I keep calling them, but he keeps saying, hey, we're, we're out here on 31. I think what they're planning on doing is once they get up in our area, you just 
like divert the trucks and whip it out. So, uh, but for the most part, what we were responsible for is done with the exception of Carl Eby's. Um, we had a couple more water leaks. We had a couple uh, sewer main breaks out at the mobile home park. Uh, Mr. Cleary is doing E court, which is behind Warren's, and then D court, which is next to the park. He's installing sewer. He had one sewer clean out or a tap, if you will, it was put in wrong, so we fixed that. What I'll say about that is the town council needs to think about maybe adding to our workforce because I have an aging workforce. Within the next five to seven years, we're going to lose some people. Um, and I, I really think that we need to start looking at maybe training some folks um, to have some mechanical ability. So I'll, I'll, I'll talk to you individually if you want to know more about that. Um, the sand pit volleyball has been dug in the, in the community park. We started hauling in sand. Unfortunately, it probably won't be open in time before the park closes. So, but it's one of those deals we ran into weather and then people with vacation and had some employees off. <laughs> Mainly me. Um, so, that's pretty much my report. All right, thank you, Jim. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. The fire and EMS. Tanker 3 is back into the service again, so we'll the trucks are up to snuff on all that. That's all I have. When is the one doing it? should have been in this week, but I haven't called for it yet. Well, we'll get what's done and see. It's supposed to be right after one come back, but or three come back. I want to thank the electric crew and the slash street crew slash every crew that they put in and installed two new security lights at the Parkside Church this week. <coughs> Thanks for that. Uh, the guys with the, the new trailer uh, dumping the dumpables seem like Maybe, I don't know, but it seems like more is getting done. They're, they're, it, 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 I don't know, they, I, I can't say they're doing a better job, but it seems like there's more getting done. It, it's kind of like the devil you don't know, yeah. because now that we have that and we're getting it done in a more proficient manner, mm -hmm. people are putting out more stuff, so. <laughs> um, but they, they, are, they are doing a good job, yeah. so they really are. And it's nice seeing this, you know, you guys and it seems very efficient so maybe yeah, we, it's, we, it's, we went the right way i think on the trailer i think so too thank you we accept the park manager reports ems they're not here right. <coughs> unless bob we got something <laughs> just making sure nope Motion to accept the department head reports. Got a motion and a second to accept the department head reports. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. One thing before claims now that we've abolished the cemetery board. Alan Earl has to set two headstones. I move that we give you permission to go ahead and pour the footers for those headstones. I'll make a motion that we give Alan Earl permission to pour two headstones in the uh, Maple Grove Cemetery. Motion. I'll second. How's that? That works. Yes. Word. Okay. Motion is second to pour two headstones. To pour footers for two headstones in the Maple Grove Cemetery. Any further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Claims 1060 through 1113. <coughs> The total docket for September the 21st was $103,529.82. The top five claims, 
Number one was payroll at $31,439.11. The second one was Peerless Midwest at $19,500. Uh, the third one is Department of Revenue Sales Tax at $8,937.89. The fourth one was Fire Service Incorporated at $7,504.78. Um, the fifth one was $6,786.28 for a total of $74,168.06 and 71% in the total docket. special chemicals from A1. What was that for? A1 is a degreaser. Okay. It goes in our lift stations. Got it. That makes sense and I'm thinking janitorial supplies was a little bit high here. Yeah, that was a... And that is <clears throat> done after this payment. We no longer use them, so... I got buckets of that stuff coming out my ears, so... Got enough to last. <laughs> I got it in writing that they will ship no more. Thank you. 
Yeah. Got a motion and a second to accept the claims. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Big anything else? Got a motion to adjourn now. Make a motion to adjourn the meeting. Got a motion? Yes. Got a second. All in favor say aye. 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 aye.